So our last talk for today is Max will be talking about large-scale seismic processing in the public cloud. Yes, hello. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, just a little disclaimer, I'm not the one who did the job, <laughs> the, the work that I'm presenting, but I do expect the questions and uh, if I can't answer, I'll, I'll forward to uh, people who couldn't make it. Uh, most of the team actually has been in Brazil and it's done by uh, kind of uh, three companies collaboration, Petrobras, uh, AWS and Atrio. So I'll just go to the punchline right, right away. So the, um, the punchline is that we were able to run a production scale workload of a very large size, five petaflop, uh, single precision peak uh, on public cloud on AWS uh, using 320 uh, V100 GPUs. And we configured Luster, uh, FSX, uh, and achieved almost 100% of the on-prem performance. Um, and of course, the um, uh, of uh, on-premise. And uh, I will tell you about what kind of optimization we had done and how did we actually did um, that run. And just, uh, just to say that the, this particular uh, instance, of course, on AWS didn't have InfiniBand. Uh, and uh, it had a cheaper version of, uh, of GPUs as well. So uh, it's been done in the several stages, um, the work, and it also you could see comparison with different public cloud uh, providers. Um, so the first, you could see um, on, the, on, the, on the right bottom side, you see Azure 1, Azure 2, Azure 3. So it kind of gives away a little bit about what optimization we've done. Um, so we moved from the instance that um, didn't have an NVLink to, this, to the one that had, Azure 2 had NVLink. And then from Azure 2 to Azure 3, we did a, a optimal placement of the, um, of the GPUs. And we had also faster storage. Um, then on AWS side, you could see that um, AWS One, it's already had optimal placement and already had an NVLink in, in, a, in an instance. Uh, AWS Two is just same thing added with the storage, with the luster. So that's a, that's a fantastic capability that we were able to, um, to exploit that basically got us to the 99.3% of on-prem. And GCP is a little bit lagging behind, you could see. Uh, um, and um, yeah, so you could see the storage on the table and pretty much the only Azure one didn't have NVLink, Every, everyone else uh, had NVLink in, in the instance. So what's the software environment, hardware software environment? Um, so it had containers, uh, um, it's, it's been done with the Singularity containers and CentOS 7, um, CUDA runtime, you can you could read that. So it basically had, um, uh, AWS had a 48 P3 um, large instances and um, the file system, um, you know, it's 100 ter terabytes uh, and it's, uh, it, wasn't, it was designed in a way that we could, we could fully utilize the, um, the bandwidth. So how did we do it? We did it with uh, uh, Atrio, this is um, a cloud management platform. Uh, multi-tier cloud management platform with a control panel over um, multiple um, uh, computing options that you could have. And we could, um, we could launch with and deploy a really production scale um, workload with, you know, with any of those um, uh, resource managers or computing options. And we could de deploy that in a, in a very large scale. So it preserved performance characteristics when it goes to uh, varieties of backends. And uh, I'll talk about the different, uh, the optimized uh, nature of, perf of the computing options that Atria can find that we'll talk about performance later. But first I wanted to show that we'll, um, you could deploy a job of that scale and create a, something that we call it a pop-up cluster of that scale you know, in less than an hour. 
Um, so that's how it looks like. It's very simple uh, control pane to the uh, to cloud service providers or com uh, supercomputing centers that you could um, uh, go. Oops, sorry, I I skipped wrong button. Okay, here here we go. So that's how it looks like. You just say, okay, I wanna I wanna create a cluster, P3, 16x large, um, you know, 40 nodes, 40 nodes la uh, cluster of um, that instance, a GPU per node, and you just it's a very simple user interface to to pick up uh, the cluster, and then um, you just review. We call it a disposable HPC cluster. It comes up and 40 nodes with GPUs, and we deploy the workload on this. So we pick an application from the App Store. It's RTM. And um, configure the files, I mean, if we need to. We, they're not needed for this workload for input. Um, that's how you configure um, the steps to run it. So you have a, a commands that you put for pre-run, for uh, before MPI run, things that were gonna happen with MPI run, uh, basically the RTM executable, and um, commands that are gonna happen after the MPI run. And there we added one more process for managing. So there's 321 processes, and put the maximum allowed times and, and option that we need GPUs. So as you could see, it's not a cheap run, right? It's $24,000 run, um, but, but it was worth it. <laughs> so it was, um, uh, so we configured this particular cluster for this particular data set, right? So it popped up the cluster that is triggered to that. And then you could see that you can configure your optimized options for every single run that you may need. Again, <laughs> okay. So then we ran it. Um, so I think the, the biggest secret here about, um, so there's two th major components into the optimization. One is the optimal pro placement of the MPI processes. Um, and the second one was the FSX uh, service, right? The, the both together, that's, that's what it gave us that, um, that performance. So the way that uh, um, seismic shot, the medical position is, is happening that those uh, GPUs are communicating with each other based on, um, there is a communication patterns on the edges, on the border, and wherever it's, and it wraps around GPU four to GPU zero. So um, I guess the whole problem fits in one node and for one shot, right, the way that it is. So if we place, processes correctly, we can make sure that um, uh, utilizing NVLink is basically what, what needs to be done to process one shot. And it, we overlay the communication and the processing um, as well. So, um, so, so, so yes, yeah, so the RTM benchmark computes independent shots in parallel, and one shot fits in one node, right? So, and then the communication happens on the border. So um, that's how we use the NVLink. Um, and that's the CUDA visible devices as the main parameter that you need to configure. And we wrote a small little tool that is happening within, within our container uh, that's called, um, uh, well, we, there's no, uh, so it's, it basically reads the NVIDIA SMI tool to see what's the topology it is unbased. Based on that, it creates automatic placement. Um, yes, yeah, so that's yeah, so that's uh, that's what you could see. So we have um, uh, so so Atria has also a performance um, assistant tool. So it basically uh, gets uh, all the information all, over GPUs, CPUs, everything that happens there. So you could, you could see um, how we utilize the GPUs and um, 
uh, in a bandwidth there too. So you could see that here that uh, um, the reason we have a tooth kind of pattern is because in NVLink, I guess, in, in when you have a box with the four GPUs, you have some GPUs that have two links and have uh, some that have one connection, right? I think it uh, has one pair. So that's why you have this uh, tooth um, pattern. But you could see that if, if you would see how would it look like if we had a PCIe communication, that would go drop down. And if we had a, a just an infinity band DDR, it would be even, even lower. So by, by placing all the GPU processes in one, uh, um, in one box that they're utilizing the NVLink, the most efficiently and mo uh, the bandwidth between them, that basically, and compute uh, the, the problem within one node, that's what made uh, the bandwidth go so, um, so high. So, and then on top of that, we configure Luster. Uh, it's also Atrios um, deploys and sets up, configures the Luster file system. If it has a, a FSX or it has a service, it, it uses that service. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it configures the file, file system when it deploys that cluster. And uh, you could see that you have each of this, so each of the, so there's 320 processes here, MPI process. So you see that each node basically, where you have one node that uh, deals with a group of four, has the, mo has the peak of the theoretical peak of IO. Right, so you can see that each node basically gets to a theoretical peak of five gigabytes per second. So this is the uh, performance data collection that happens in Atrio. While every job runs, you could see no matter what cloud it is, uh, private cloud, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud environment, it profiles every single job run. And you could see that it says, oh yeah, well GPU utilization was low. You should do something about that and then uh, that's what made us. Uh, that's what made us uh, think that we our placement of GPUs were not correct in the very beginning. So you could see that Azure One, Azure Two, AWS, and GCP One, all that had that configuration. The reason we configure it is because it gave us this clue on the performance assistance. So uh, as far as conclusion goes. Um, yeah, so one thing is that, yeah, we could create pop-up cluster of that size in less than an hour. And you can imagine that the hardware procurement takes much longer than that, right? <laughs> yes, if you were the, for production workloads. Um, um, the pop-up cluster, you can define for each job, like I said. You could, since it takes just an hour, you, uh, you, you really can find um, an optimal, uh, a right optimal configuration out of all the computing options that you have. You can say, okay, for my job, I need this instance of that configuration. So that's what we can, we can dynamically do very, very fast. Um, uh, and uh, yes, so we achieved the on-prem performance. It's very, very important to say that, you know, we use the less expensive GPUs and no InfiniBand on AWS. And um, uh, another, another important thing that around this approach, like I said, it's um, uh, we're, we're using the resources very wisely and to the peak, right? So we were, were able to, using cloud resources to deliver enough bandwidth to do the, the computation that we need. And that's rarely, rarely happens, right? So just to really being able to optimize uh, usage of the resources uh, to, uh, to deliver it peak performance. And um, our Luster file system delivered a peak performance. So that's, uh, that's another thing. Um, so yeah, so we have some extra slides of all the uh, work that we refer to. There's a lot of work that we uh, build it on top to. And then there's an interesting thing that I wanted to show is that, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is about the perf portability of performance. People say that, oh, you know, the containers are portable. Yes, which is just through VMs are portable. 
but when you start to port a performance on multi-node of that scale on the environment that is on-prem, off-prem, um, hybrid cloud, private cloud, different clouds, different instances, this is what you need to do to make sure that you actually gather that information. And then after you gather this information, you have, with all these tools, you have to figure it out, okay, how I'm gonna see what actually is gonna happen, right? So that's, so that's why we created a tool with Atrio that really takes care of that performance portability and um, gives you an assistant about how to configure the, uh, the run correctly. So any questions? Yes. Just uh, three uh, quick questions. Um, first of all, the last file assistance in the cloud is based on SSDs, I presume. Uh, NVMe SSDs only? Uh, if, if it's based on SSD, let me go back to, I actually don't know. Um, so all I know about this FSX, it's 28800 megabytes. AWS 2. Don't, don't worry. I, I, don't I can know what check exactly with your colleagues. Is, yeah. <laughs> I understand your yeah. first only. The second one is, uh, uh, I understand the last file system is in the 100 terabyte range, right? Mm -hmm. Then how much, how big is the typical size of a data set, the seismic data set? Uh, I think it was somewhere in the slides. Like, let me see. I think... Um, See, 100 terabyte file system. Now, yeah. how big is the, the data set? Yeah, I, I don't know the output, but I think, uh, well, it was enough for us to, to make this run. So I don't, I, I, I don't know. OK, the the feet. don't worry if uh, I can yeah. talk to your colleague. Yeah, yeah, and I, can, the, I the, can ask them. The, I, the third one is, how do you get the data set into this Yeah, 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 I can. Um, That's it. Yes, definitely. I, uh, I'll ask him the questions. Okay. I'll give you the email address of Okay, I think we have time for one quick question, so. Uh, just out of curiosity, so you said it's 24, 25K, right? How long did the job run in the cloud? Uh, all day, 24 hours. 24 hours. It's about, yeah, about 1,000 per hour. <coughs> okay, uh, I think I we're just about, oh, no. there's one more, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Very quick. Was the data set that was used uh, crafted so that all the shots fit inside a single node, or did it just happen that one way? One shot fit in one node. But so did you do any tests, though, with when they don't fit in a node? Uh, I think uh, they, so there was a one slide that talked to this. Hold on one second. I think it was here. Um, Because I saw your on-prem uses 32 gig GPUs, and then you took advantage of a yeah. lower. Yeah, I don't remember. It. I had. I, I will. I will get back to that. But I think it all fits in there. Okay. Thank you, Max, and to all the speakers. Thanks.